1222. This one's gonna be pushing it a bit. Let's talk about weather here. It's 82 degrees right now. That's good. We got some spotty storms rolling in in two hours. 100% chance. Half inch of rain. Thunderstorms. I don't care about storms. One day. What do we got here? The heaviest wood in the world and the lightest wood in the world. Well, I know for a fact this is the heaviest wood in the world. Lignum vitae. Lignum vitae? That might be how you pronounce that. And balsa wood. Let me check, let me see. The way I'm supposed to be saying this is we have the densest wood and the softest wood. Softest wood in the world is, dang it, dang it. There's a wood from a cupo tree. I think that's how you say that, a cupo tree. It's drastically softer than balsa wood. Balsa wood's 100 foot pounds, or sorry, pound feet. And this wood's like 20, 22 pound feet. Let's just do this anyway. Um, I drew this up. That is the section of this bait I'm gonna be using the dense wood and the top, you know, that's gonna be balsa. It's just gonna be a crankbait. This is, looks like a bit over three inch of a bait. Three inches of bait. Let's go. Let's not think about it too much. Let's just do this. Looking for a pencil. Been looking for my pencil for, oh, probably about five minutes now. I guess I'll just break out a pen. Got a cut off chunk off of the densest wood in the world. About that big, you probably can't even see that line, but I'm gonna get to cutting. Wish my bandsaw luck. Good luck, bandsaw. That actually smells like chemicals. That smells very bad. Yeah. Okay, let's get this blade out of here. Come on. This is very, very weird. It turns it into a dust when you... Sorry. It turns into a dust when you cut it, and it gets stuck in the wood, like on the wood. You can scrape it off with your thumbnail. It's kind of gross. So far, I'm not liking this wood. It stinks, and it does weird stuff. This is a wood not to be trusted. So, I believe what I'm going to be doing is cutting out the white part on this lure, and then cutting out the black part as two separate things as accurately as possible. I mean, that's got to be accurate and then gluing it in and continuing with the rest of the build. This literally is the only deviation on the build of this lure. That's the only thing I'm doing different, just trying to cut out two really accurate shapes and glue them together and put the lip in. You know what I mean. So, where's my glue stick? Oh, and if I had to describe a smell, you guys ever do drugs? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, what does it smell like? It's like if your grandma collected pine tar, put it in her basement, and then poured gasoline all over that every day. And then you went over there and your grandma's wearing way too much perfume and maybe cooking some sort of like rubber chip cookies in her oven and she burned them. It's intense. Um, yeah, odor, mild perfume-like fragrance. Mild? Are you like my shop smells very bad right now. It's been known to cause skin irritation. That's the only allergy slash toxicity of this wood. And on this database thing, a lot, a lot of the time it's a lot more than that, so it's, it must not be too bad for you, right? What was I doing? Oh, cutting it out, duh. Let's get back to work. One day, look at this work sharpened knife. You don't even need a cutting surface, you know? Just do this accurately. When I cut this out, I need to stay off of the paper and then later sand to the paper. That way it'll meet up perfectly on the lure. This is on the balsa. This is on the other stuff. It's said that this is very hard to glue up, this wood. It's very oily and does not accept glue well, but you just watch, I shall have no issue. I cut out a very large piece of this wood. This piece of wood right here is over $10. I paid $50 for the whole chunk and that's, that's I cut a lot of off of this for no reason, I should have just cut off a little square. Wasn't thinking, this is an expensive lure already. And I'm buying a new house right now, so way to go. See on this side, on the bandsaw, I'm gonna have to get very accurate. I can't sand this. It's gotta be very flat and it's gotta be right up to that balsa wood. You know, I can do some finessing and make these things fit. I'm gonna way overcut this and make sure it fits, but you know what I mean. You know how this works. I've said you know in this video too many times already. I just rely on you guys knowing too much, I think. I need you guys to know everything already. Just watch me do what I do. I need to lower this. So there's one side of the lip slot and the back of the lip slot all in this 
piece of wood. Before cutting out the rest of this bait, I'm just checking the fit. It's close. Well, actually I have sanding to do on this. Let's sand this and then check the fit. When I'm gonna be working on this thing by hand and bringing tool to it with my hand, um, I, I'm gonna have to be careful. This is such a giant difference in density of wood. Carving on the hardwood and then popping right into the balsa and destroying my bait is a big possibility. We're getting there. See how much of a fit up that is. The angles are perfect. I got a little bit of something something down here I need to sand away at, but not a problem. That was easy. That is all it took right there. It's perfectly flush now. There's the weight of the bait. That was really efficient. Maybe this is a more efficient way of making a lure. I'm gonna cut the rest of this out and get back to you. Step two. No. This is not a step-by-step -step process and I've never kept track. I don't know why I'm saying step two, but next thing we're doing is gluing the hardwood to the softwood really well. It needs to be real well. There's going to be probably a twist wire that runs through the hardwood and into the balsa, securing it with a mechanical connection too. So there's that, but I want the glue up to be strong enough in and of itself. So what I'm going to use, no, is not epoxy, not wood glue, not any other glue except the best glue ever, super glue. And if I got to get some accelerator going, if I need this thing to flash cure, it's going to soak into the balsa, but I need it to adhere to the oily, stupid hardwood real well. So my intention is just to, my intention is just to add a lot. Onto the hardwood first, cover the whole thing. Let that super glue vibe out on that hardwood for a while. Get it to soak in. I think it has vibed for long enough. Let us add the balsa. And now, be patient. Let that adhere. Whew, I was about to add more and I just thought, no, let it glue. Don't add more on the outside, just let it glue up. Apply pressure. That already looks kind of cool. I'm gonna sand down the faces on either side too. It's gonna me mesh up perfectly. Okay, never mind. I'm applying glue to the sides. I just wanna be sure. And I'm not just applying it, I'm using an accelerator too. Like get that glue to seep in and then get the accelerator to seep in too and flash cure. It's on there. It's, see I just dropped it and it's still fine. It's on there. All right, let us continue with the standard build of a crankbait. It's already weighed. I just need to cut it out and carve it out. Put the lip in. I drew out the stencil for the lip already. Okay, I need to run, I need to not use this pen. This is going to be exposed wood to show off what I did. So I need to uh, run in the house and get a pencil. Oh, no, found my pencil. Never mind. Probably not even gonna put that in the video. Would be completely useless for me to do. That. If I put this in the video, that's kind of pathetic. Anyway, let's make the taper of this bait from nose to belly to tail. I'm kind of impressed with the workability of this wood. I have not been treating it any different from any other kind of wood I make lures out of, and it's totally workable. Densest wood in the world is totally workable with, with standard belt sander, sander, I haven't brought a knife to it yet. Maybe I'm gonna eat my words here in a bit, but this wood ain't tough. Ooh, I think Chip's outside my door. You guys wanna see Chip? You guys haven't seen Chip in forever. Chip? Oh, uh, I guess I was just hearing things. Maybe you guys will just have to see Chip in this video now and I'll just have to make a point of it. Sorry, didn't mean to get your hopes up. That dummy got into a mushroom patch yesterday and ate them all, and I don't know what kind of mushrooms they were. Maybe that was two days ago. Anyway, he was throwing up. One of his eyes swole up. Dog's a moron. Very loving moron, but nonetheless, he's a moron. I think that's every dog, though. I don't want to offend dog people. Knife. Sharp one. No messing around with this. I need a sharp knife. Okay. Sharper knife is much... It. I need a sharper one than this. Okay. So I can 
really see how this presents a challenge. Really see it now. This is gummy, gummy, disgusting, horrible wood. I mean, it's not that hard to cut, but it just grabs your blade. Ugh. Ooh, I hear rain. Oh no, it's starting to rain already. I need to just waterproof myself. Like get the right camera stuff so I can fish in the rain and it doesn't matter. I need to overcome these kinds of things. It's fun fishing in the rain, especially when you're in a creek. I want, ooh, I'm gonna take this to a creek. This is gonna be fun. I'm excited, guys. This is gonna be amazing. Stay tuned, guys. There you go. Roughly carved out. Easy freaking peasy. Let's sand it. Let's see how sanding works. With sanding, usually use one of these, do one of these on it, and then the balsa wood could get sanded down a lot quicker than the hardwood, so. Let's see if that even happens. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be very careful. I'm just gonna sand on the hardwood first and then bring the balsa down to its level. Woo, that, why did that just scare the crap out of me? Did that scare the crap out of you? Woo! Been doing this for like eight years and when a bait slips out of your vise, it still scares the crap out of me. It's working. I'm having to do it a little different from how I would, but it's totally working. It's not an issue. The file's good because it's flat and it's going to stay flat no matter what. It's a piece of steel, so it won't gouge into the balsa as easy after it gets off of the hardwood. It's just flat. The sandpaper will gouge in because it's flexible and not flat. You know these things. You know. I have quite a bit of confidence that this will work great. I'm just hoping it's not going to sink. This feels very heavy on the belly. Can you see that? Yeah, that's heavy. Keep sanding. Stop getting distracted. This is a one day. Excuse me, one day! Got some 220 here using a hardwood block. This is oak as a backing for the 220. The goal is just to take off any obvious ridges, make it look pretty, not so scuffy. I'm not gonna go past 220 in the sanding either. The clear coat really takes care of all that. It's a thick one. I'm not spraying on a thin one, it's a thick one, so I can get away with having 220 scratches in it and then clear coating it and you can't see it. It looks good. There is the sanded, finish carved shape and look of this bait. Actually, I need to drill out some eye sockets, but you get the picture. The hardware in this bait are gonna be these things, twist wires. I need to make one more. But my intention is to get all of these twist wires going through that hardwood, not just into the balsa, but all the way to that hardwood. Give it something hard to glue into, you know? Hot, 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 hot. It's another South Park, Park reference for you. And if you don't get it, I don't think you wanna get that one. So yeah, I need these to be nice and long. That way they can all reach. The belly one won't need to be so long. Like that can be the belly one. This is the front one, and this back one needs to be really long. Yeah, and then that's the back one. Don't have to get my lead pot hot. Don't have to freak out. And remember, it's good stuff. This is easy. Kind of fun making the wood mesh up like that and being all craftsman-y, pretending I'm a craftsman. So yeah, remember, we're trying to get into that hardwood. I got it angled towards the belly a little bit too, off the tail. It's gummy. Ooh, it's, that's a clogger right there, this wood is. Look at that, full, nasty. Peels off like aluminum. It is good to take the time to actually remove that from the spirals on your bit though. This stuff will break your nice bits. So yeah, this bait's gonna have a line tie that goes through the lip. Just a little bit though. Dang it, I actually did not want that. But that's how good I am at lining up drill bits and drilling. Pretty impressive, huh? Coming this end, coming that end, it just, I line that hole up perfectly. You're impressed, I know. I'll just cut it to the right length on the nose. I'll just cut one of these, or I'll cut, I'll cut that much off of both of them and they'll meet. That's, that's just kind of funny though, right there, that, that worked out that way, I wasn't even trying. That's not easy to do get a through wire hole through your whole bait like that. That's this diameter. Impressive, I know. I'm gonna get off the subject now and keep making this bait. Drill the belly hole, put it in a good spot right there. 
And of course, I run right into those two. It's okay. I'll, uh, you just do what you gotta do. I have no explanation of what I'm gonna do now. It's just, I gotta cut that much off, and just, it's gonna be a short, stubby little one. It's gonna glue in, but you'll see, it'll be fine. Like, I could catch a 10-pounder on that, no problem, it won't pull out. Have I done that before? No, but, well, I've, I've snagged, like, big catfish with that kind of stuff, and, and carp. Fish that fight harder than your typical bass, you know? Your mom. <laughs> Sorry, it was dumb. Wow. I got them all to sit flush and they don't run into each other. Like I left just barely enough room on that center hole to where everything just kind of meets up and touches each other, but they sit flush. Let's uh, let's get that lip cut out, get the lip glued in, redrill the hole, put everything in, secure everything, glue it up, drill the eye socket, seal the bait. You know, let's not go through all the steps verbally. Let's do it physically. <laughs> let's get your glue stick back out. Get your super sharp knife out. I bet that's a giant pet peeve to some people that I use the corner of the glue stick like that to glue it on instead of lay it flat. <laughs> Take that, you OCD people. Absolutely savage. Ah, Bob Saget. I didn't draw that lip the right size. It's too thin. It's got space on either side. I, like, I want that flush usually because it looks bad if it's not, but. Okay, let's let's do this correctly. Is that a good, yeah. Yeah, that's probably a good size. So I use an air hose fitting for this one. Get that straightened up. That is much more appropriately sized, as you can see. Let's cut that out and see where we're at. If that lip's too long, I'll sand it back. Almost dropped my lure. I do that a lot. That lip is way too long, so I'm gonna sand that back evenly. That's straight. You get it straight and you stop touching it, the lip. Get your glue, make sure it's thin, drop it on. And now it's straight forever, no going back. That's a glued in lip. That's an eighth inch of real Lexan polycarbonate too. I wasn't gonna skimp on this bait. I wanted the real stuff. Good length, that's gonna have a lot of wobble. This is gonna look good ripping through the creeks, I tell you. What? Now I'm just gonna grab the thick super glue, put a dollop on the table, right there, start smothering these twist wires in it and putting them in. There. Two more steps. Super glue bath, bath and then drill out the eye sockets and then put the eye on. When I, last time I used balsa wood, I cracked a lure on the drill press because I didn't super glue it first and I was trying to drill out an eye socket. Silly, silly me. There's some accelerator on this bait that I was spraying. And if you get that accelerator and the super glue on your finger at the same time, that gets kind of warm. Your finger's gonna be smoking for a half a second. No baking soda in this video. Sorry, fellas. As for the eye sockets, we got a quarter inch bit right here, Forstner bit. I'm gonna be very careful because this is into balsa wood. We're just gonna drill these out nice and shallow. Just give yourself a spot to put an eyeball. Just like that. I'm going to cover this eye socket that we just made in super glue again, but that's it. And not only that, but if there's like little, you know, fuzzies and stuff you gotta cut to make that flat and look better. Super glue will solidify the fuzzies and they won't, the, that won't look good. Do not solidify, I'm not even on camera, and I'm talking about the weirdest stuff, solidifying fuzzies and, uh, anyway. Don't solidify your fuzzies, cut them off. Cut the fuzzies off. I'm gonna bust the 220 back out and get this stuff smooth. I left some crusties from the accelerator and super glue. Get rid of the crusties and then we're gonna do a UV coat on this. Maybe I'll do a comparison video later with the actual softest wood in the world, whatever its name was, and balsa, and see how much of a difference there is. When it comes to an action, we might be able to give a topwater bait or something. Maybe that will make up to, for me lying to you about this being the softest wood in the world in the title, because I don't see myself not doing that. It's gonna use some standard holographic silver eyes. It's gonna look beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Those were the eyes that needed to be on this bait. Let's get this clear coat on. I wanna get fishing. Looking delicious. Why is this bait turning on me while I'm trying to do this weird thing that I do after every clear coat? Camera's 
low on battery right now, so if I cut out, you know why, but... End of the tank. Look at this. Chelsea didn't just tie this, but it's a nice bright orange with a whole bunch of hackle and stuff off the back. Feather treble for this bait, which is all clear coated and absolutely stunning. Very simple look, right? But you can really tell what I was going for there. Heavy wood in the bottom, balsa on the top. Get some hooks on this. Longer I deal with hooks and split rings and stuff, I kind of have been realizing you don't need, you know, 150 pound test split rings. I've definitely been preferring more lighter 40 pound split rings, you know, or 50 pound or 60. Even if you're musky fishing, like the pound testage on the split rings are never accurate representations of how much force that one of these actually can take. It's way more. I should test that sometime. Lure. Experimental videos, but actually on the tackle, that'd be cool. That sounds fun. Like test brands and stuff. Yeah. Getting muggy out here in the garage. It's getting hot out. I don't have good AC. I got that little air conditioner, but it's garbage. I never even run it and I'm moving. So I'm going to be out of here soon. And I think I'm going to have a good air conditioner in the next one. Isn't that exciting? New shop. You guys are going to see me make it too. Is that too much? That looks like a little too much. I know in the water that's going to even out. Eh, should I put this giant feather? It's too much. I hear you. Chelsea understands, by the way. She don't feel bad for Chelsea now. Much, much more appropriate. Because this is like a simple, you know, the beauties and the simplicity and the mechanics. And you can tell what was going on. And the lines are nice and straight and every, you know, that looks better. Don't tell me otherwise. It's my channel, my opinion. That looks better. Okay. How heavy is this? This bait is, oh sweet, 0.6 ounce. It's very light. I'm gonna use a spinner. I think that'll be much more appropriate for the creek. A lot of the time I don't like taking a bait caster to the creek. Tied up, ready for the creek. Let's see what we get. Let's go. Sort of storm clouds coming in here, as you see right now, probably. Didn't do a very good job of swerving them, but went straight through them. It floats. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. It floats and it wiggles. It's a slow wobble. That's a very slow wobble. Oh, and I'm not at a creek because they're blown out in chocolate milk right now. So I forgot it's been raining so much lately. But let's not cast it into it. Ooh, I have not taken a thumbnail. <laughs> that was close. Oh, I'm feeling that I need to go to a pond, especially after that rain. It either turns the fish on or it shuts them off in a nice little conventional crankbait like this and they're not biting. Storms are coming back. They're rolling in fast. This might be good. That might turn this pond on. And I don't know if I'm blocking the wind, but I'm trying to from my microphone right now. I hope you can hear me. It's getting windy. Um, and maybe I can show you guys some better action of this thing. I think the waters here will be more clear. Thank you, BJ Pond. Kevin from BJ Pond, thank you for letting me fish here. Go check out his website pond management. Any of you need a pond managed? BJPond.com. Oh, something big just moved off the bank. I need to, I need to be more careful. We're going to catch one. I'm feeling good. It's kind of creepy how good I'm feeling about this. <laughs> yeah, just like that. It's official. Pond bass, like baits made with the densest and softest wood in the world. Except I lied because that's balsa and there's one softer than balsa. Be free. Let's get some fish. Uh oh, it's gonna get heavy. I might have to retreat into the woods. Uh oh, oh, it's coming in. To the woods. Let's check if this will be over. When will this be over? All right, we can stick this out and I can get some poison ivy while I'm in here too. Win, win. Actually, a better idea would be to take a leak. I feel like I haven't peed all day. Why am I telling this to you guys? This is a YouTube channel about fishing, not urinating. Could be the new pissy pie. Piss die pie.
Can you say piss on YouTube? Okay, it seems to have died down. I'm gonna get out there and fish. Oh, ow. I'm gonna get out there and fish. Could you guys imagine a five pounder today on this weird lure? I'm starting to. Oh, there we go. Fish on. Look at this five pounder. <laughs> I did it. Five pounder on the bywood lure. There's one. Oh wow, they're in the shallows. And they're all dinky in the shallows right up here. Just recently this pond had otters get into it. Um, lost a lot of big fish. Otters play with big fish and take bites out of them and then they slowly die. Everybody hates otters. But that just presents a bit more of a challenge to catch a big fish out of here because their population's been a bit ravaged. It's not stopping me. I love this pond. Let's get to some good spots. There are a lot of dark clouds rolling in, so I'm gonna get over here real quick and catch a five pounder. Five pounder. Let's go guys. Let's get to five pounder before the rain comes in. This is extreme marlin bait fishing. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, we're here. Yeah, some clouds popped up behind the others. This is my last chance. There we go. What is this? Oh, it's just a bass. <laughs> Hooked on just the back. That made a fight weird. I thought it was something else. Come on, give me something good. Oh, it's coming in. Here comes the mean clouds. Oh, okay. It's pouring. Might want to get in the truck. Just for, oh geez, that's a lot of water. Whew. What an interesting concept. And it worked. The action was not ideal, but it worked. You can get a crankbait like that in that shape with that lip to just pop, 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 pop. And that does not do that. It's because the weight's so distributed. It's up on the sides too. It's just this bigger mass that it has to move around. And if you could put in one point all the weight you need in like an infinitely small point on the lure, that would be perfect. That would be the most ideal thing for a lure. And then everywhere else is uh, buoyancy pulling against that point. That's why you use lead. That's, you know, it's toxic. Um, I mean, you could use gold, you can use tungsten. It's just more expensive. Lead's just the cheapest thing that is that way where it's a smaller point with a, a lot of mass. The sacrifice you make as a bait maker. I say it every video. Bait making requires sacrifices. You all know it by now. Beautiful baits take years off your life, apparently. I, I'm kidding, I stay safe with lead and stuff. Ventilate, I mean, I don't, I should wear hand protection and stuff. And cut me some slack, geez. <sighs> Successful video, once again, and it's over. And as promised, there will be video of Chip at the end of this video. I'm so excited to move. Build up a new shop, starting over. Throw all this stuff in a, probably multiple truckloads and a flatbed and stuff, but I'm moving. Okay, enough about my life. On to the next bait. Can you sit? Oosh. Sit. Shake. 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 Good boy. <laughs> 